What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I uh, hope everybody's having a great thirsty Thursday. Uh, the weekend is just is just around the corner. We got the Senior Bowl this weekend, so we'll be. Um, covering that uh, this weekend and stuff so we can look at some of the prospects uh, that are out there and start figuring out who the Dallas Cowboys might get. We still have the offensive coordinator position that's open and a name that has been talked about for quite a few years now, Tony Romo. A lot of fans think that Tony Romo should be the offensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys. And I've often said, listen, why would Tony Romo want to leave a $17 million a year job where he's got the off season off? You know, you got 17 weeks of regular season and a couple of weeks of playoffs and that's it. You know, being an offensive coordinator, you know, you're working right now. You're coming up with the game plans and stuff. You're looking at the players and the talent that you have uh, on the roster. You're trying to figure it all out. It is a 365-day-a-year job. Why would Romo want to leave a cushy job announcing games for that? Well, Tony Romo has seemingly gone from one of the most loved sports personalities doing games to now one that just makes you nauseated. It's getting to the point where he was originally talked like he was John Madden a couple years ago. Now it's talked more like he's Jason Witten. So it may be that he may be looking for another position because CBS is basically known that this was a problem going into this season. And mind you, um, let, let me read to you a little bit about what's going on here. CBS executives apparently aware that Tony Romo's work as an an analyst has gone downhill. Um, members of the CBS management spoke with Romo last year in an effort to bluster his pregame preparation. His rough performance this season, and especially during the playoffs, indicated their efforts did not play off. Tony Romo needs to study more. He needs to be better prepared. As you move away from the sidelines, you need to do more work. I know CBS is aware of this. They've tried to intervene last season. They knew. They anticipated this. That's a credit to them. The people in charge there. But it's not gotten better. Romo's performance during the AFC Championship uh, exposed all of his flaws. Now, for me, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't notice them because when I'm live streaming, I'm listening to everybody that's here or the Zoom call and so on. I'm reading the comments and things. So, you know, I'm seeing the plays. I'm not necessarily hearing what they're talking about. So I've missed a lot of this. He was all stick and no substance and seemingly wasn't aware of the biggest storylines heading into the game. When tight end Travis Kelsick mocked the broken moniker, the Bengals referred to Arrowhead Stadium as the broke head due to their success in Kansas City. Romo sounded perplexed. It's not Burrowland, he said. It's Arrowhead, he said. Romo showing roughing, uh, rough showing Sunday stood in cro stark contrast. Stark contrast compared to his work calling for the 2019 AFC Championship, which might have been his apex as an analysis. Romo predicted nearly every Tom Brady throw during the Patriots' comeback win over the Chiefs. Nowadays, that uh, clairvoyance is gone. It doesn't seem like Romo is getting much help in the booth either. Um, Nance appears to be content with letting his partner struggle. This is the narrative out of CBS when Romo was getting all the publicity. You heard from Nance's side and people in CBS that Nance was the one creating Romo. Um, the issue now is why isn't Nance helping Romo to get to the next level? CBS kicked off the broadcasting bidding wars with Romo when it eked, and inked him to a 10-year, $180 million contract. Wow. And so now they're having some buyer's remorse. Um 
I was, I'll be honest with you. I will be 100% honest with you. I have hated whenever Tony Romo has been the commentator for the Dallas Cowboy games. I just, it, it just doesn't go well for me. And for me, when everybody was singing his praises in 2019, you know, because he, and he was, he was always going to, it's like, you know what? I'd rather go ahead and see the play unfold and then you tell me about it as opposed to it being scripted where you got a script that tells you exactly what's going to happen. I don't want to know beforehand. I want to see what's going to happen. But that's me. That's me. And maybe other people want to know what's going to happen on this play. Okay. But when you start thinking about then analyzing the play afterward, it's really not there. And one of the things that was kind of crazy, I've been trying to give benefit to, of the doubt and try to figure out what the next word was going to be um, from this. This was part of his call. The extra yards, the tough yards, the finish on the play. Right there, you got three. And you talked about it. This is the best tackling team. They don't miss tackles. The extra yards, the tough yards, the finish on the play. Right there, you got three. And you talked about it. This is the best tackling team. They don't miss tackles. The extra yards, the tough yards, the finish on the play. The right finish there, on the play. You talked about it. This is the best tackling team. They don't miss three, tackles. Three, three, Nick. Three, the Nick. Yards, the tough three, yards, three. The finish on the play. Right there, you got three. And you talked about it. This is the best tackling team. I, I, I thought, well, tackles. maybe he's going to say, I, so... That's where you start saying, you're winging it. I got $18 million. I got more money than I'll ever be able to spend. I got money to pass down to my kids' kids. I got a wonderful wife and all that. I got a 10-year contract. What are they going to do? Fire me? Okay, they fire me. I, you know, I, I, got, I got a boatload of money that they'll owe me. See... The thing about life is, and, and I, I understand the drive to other people. For me, not that I am on top. Believe me, I am not anywhere near on top. But what I do know is this. Things come and things go. There has been no business that has been a forever business. Before Facebook, what was it before Facebook? Uh I didn't even do that thing, but but it was something before Facebook. You know, remember what I'm talking about? Uh, MySpace. You know, MySpace came through, and man, that was doing great stuff. And then it was Facebook, and then it's Twitter, you know, and then, of course, you know, YouTube, and, you know, now you got Snapchat and TikTok and Instagram. You know, it's always something new. And the thing is, is you have to continue to reinvent yourself change and get better what you're doing right now may work for now but if you don't get better what's going to happen is other people are going to realize what you do figure out how to do it cheaper and how to do it better trust me Earl's video thought they were the bomb diggity till Blockbuster came through. Blockbuster, they thought they had it. And now they ain't anywhere to be found. So for those out there that would like to have Tony Romo as the offensive coordinator, hey, he might be available sometime in the near future. The question would be is, would he put in more work as the offensive coordinator than he is just talking about football i'm mark holmes and well i guess we're gonna strut i gotta scratch that idea of tony romo being a great offensive coordinator and as always i'll see you guys later are you not entertained are you not entertained is this not why you are here